Hey there, Russ here. Welcome back to the shop. Okay. Well, I've made this new contraption, and I call it my Ryobi-powered 12-volt battery charger. And by that, I mean that you can take any, I can take any of my Ryobi batteries, tool batteries, and plug them into it and take the power from this battery, in this case, this is the 5 amp hour, so there's 90 watt hours. I can push those 90 watt hours into a 12 volt battery and and do it. And, and it being a 5 volt, I can do it in about a half hour. It takes about a half hour to move the volts from the amperage from here to the other battery. So how does it work and why do you even need something like that? Well, let's go over that. First, let me show you how it's made. So uh, very simply, first thing I have is I have a Ryobi receptacle. So I can plug this into a Ryobi battery of any kind. And the output is the two wires that come out the top. This one in particular I got off of AliExpress. And it has a switch on it to turn this thing on and off. So when you plug the battery in, you don't get power coming out unless you turn the switch on. So And the battery just pops on there and locks on so that now it's... This thing is ready to go. Now I've hooked it up to a cigarette lighter plug-in. And I have a battery right here in front of me that you can't see it, but it's right here. And it has a 12 volt cigarette lighter plug-in. So we're gonna plug this into that. And you'll see that there's no there's nothing going on yet. But if I turn on the 12 volt uh, plug-in outlet on my battery, my this is actually a hundred amp hour lithium phosphate battery it's a power pack that i made a while back and i did i actually did a video on it but anyway we're using this to be that's where i want to put the voltage from here into that battery it could be any kind of battery that's uh either a 12 or a 24 volt system and you should be able to take and push the uh, wattage from here into that battery so let's go ahead and let's do that and i'll show you how it works i plugged it in and i turned it on and now you can see there is voltage there. That battery has 13.3 volts. The light, the icon on the side over here is the load right here. So anything I hooked up to here, that would turn on and off based on turning that button on and off. You can see the little arrow pop on means that power is going from the battery to there. So now let's turn on the solar power switch by turning the battery switch on right here. And what that'll do is that'll allow this juice then to go into the charge controller. And you see, you notice there's an arrow there. That means that I am actually putting voltage from this battery into my lithium battery down there, my 12 volt. Uh, let's do this. One, two, three, four. And you can see right there, I'm putting in three, whoops, one more. Ah, let me do it again. One, two, three, four. Four. And you can see it's putting in 3.8 amps into that battery from this battery. Means that in just under, just over a half hour, I'll have this full thing discharged and all of that juice will have gone into my 100 amp hour battery. Now you'll notice that when I turn it off, it turns off and it's no longer charging that battery. It's still hooked up and if I want to run some power from here, I just have to plug it into here and turn that, well in this case it's already on. And then I would turn that on to turn that light to turn that on whether it's a light or whatever it is and that would be running from the battery so it's just a simple charge controller then that's how it works so i can plug this into any battery that is a 12 volt or even a 24 volt one or the other battery and i can charge from my ryobi battery and put that amperage into the other battery so it's real simple to make. This charge controller was the least expensive one I could find out there. It comes with instructions. And this is the box it came in. I paid like $12 for it. So I basically got $12 here 
and this adapter run me right at seven dollars so that means I got less than twenty dollars wrapped up in this thing and I can now take any Ryobi tool battery and push those push that into another lithium 12 volt or 24 volt battery now depending upon which unit you buy of solar controller <clears throat> Some of them will do other things, and you could actually set the actual voltage. So you could do other things with this in, in when you think about it. But I'm just showing you how to use it by using your tool batteries and move that juice from here into some other battery pack or solar generator that you might need. Now, I will tell you that if you take this, <coughs> you can use this setup. If you have a plug-in on a solar generator, where when you plug it in, it feeds the energy back into that solar generator to where you can charge it up from a, let's say a barrel 5521 uh, connector. You can put that kind of connector on here instead, plug this into that solar generator, plug a battery, Ryobi battery, and this will charge up that solar generator. As long as you have pass-through charging on that, generator and not all of them do some of the real less expensive ones don't give you that privilege you can't charge it and discharge it at the same time but if you can you can actually then take your batteries plug it into here hook this up to that solar generator move this energy from here into that solar generator now why would you want to do that well what if you have that thing and you're using it to do something but you don't want to stop the process while it's running, let's say you had your power pack hooked up to a computer, and if you turn, if you unplug the power pack, you have to reboot the computer. Well, you don't want to have to go through that. Well, you can be recharging that computer with this. That will recharge the solar generator while it's also taking the volts out of the solar generator, and it can keep going on perpetually as long as you rotate tool batteries that are fully charged and hook it up as you go through and as they get empty you put another battery in and you can perpetually keep going theoretically and then while you have one battery discharging you could be charging them up <clears throat> however you charge them up somewhere else and just bring them and rotate them so you can turn any solar generator into a fully perpetual power source that you can keep charged up while you're pulling the power out of it and that's just one use you might be able to use there's lots of little things i've been thinking about that i might be able to do with this so I decided I would go ahead and make this, and I made it from one of the least expensive ones that I could. Now this thing will get, you can input up to 50 volts into this. So I could actually take three of these, or two of these, and put them together in series, and push that 40 volts, or that 36 volts, into there, just like I did with a single battery, if I had two hooked up in series, going into my connection on here. And then that would up the amps. Right now, you saw it was actually pushing right at 4 amps from here into there. So, but the nice thing about it is, is that all I had to do was just plug a battery in, hook it up to that other battery pack, in this case, this battery pack right down here, and I could add the voltage, add amperage to this so it doesn't run out if I want. Um... It can be a nice little additive if you're off power and you're trying to keep things going. Now, let's say you take a battery, a solar generator with you on a camping trip. Grab a couple of these batteries and this and take it with you. And now you have extra power in case that solar generator gets uh, starts to get low on power toward the end of the camping period. You can then start throwing batteries on it and recharge it back up. And then recharge these batteries on your from your automobile and you can keep the, the solar generator going whatever you're doing with it while you're out camping so it's kind of handy it adds the length of how much time how much power you can get out of your units you can add that by adding Ryobi batteries to it for when it's pulling power out so anyway the other thing I know that you could do with this and I know you've seen other guys do it where they take this take a Ryobi tool or take a tool battery and hook it up to a car battery to be able to jump start it and basically they hooked it up directly the 18 volts into that 12 volt battery and they're pushing the current down into there 
Well, that's pretty unregulated and it could be risky doing it that way, but you could do it. But if you wanted to, I could take this and hook this up directly to my battery. Let it take the juice from here and put it in that battery and then take one or two batteries. I can get that battery charged up enough to be able to jumpstart it then. So you can even use this as a battery, as a car jumper, if you wanted to, when you think about it. So uh, the only limitation you have is that, like I said, at 14.4 volts going in and I'm running one battery on there, that's only pushing about four amps. You could probably double that if you hook two of these up in series, then you can probably push eight amps into that battery instead, I suspect. So anyway, I don't know without trying it. So I may try hooking up two of these adapters in series and then have the batteries hooked up to here to see what a 40 volt system it plugged in, how it would charge up your, uh, your battery or whatever you're trying to charge up. Anyway, this is the beginning of it. I kind of wanted to show this to you, give you an idea of what it looked like and how it worked. Actually, I'm quite pleased, and it is was extremely simple and very cheap to make. All I did is I hot glued the meter to a little piece of plywood, and then I hot glued the plywood to the top of my adapter so that it made it all one piece. And I can change out my end to any kind of end I want through, yes, one of these lever connectors. So I can put a barrel connector on there or any kind that I want uh, very easily. So I can use this just about anywhere. So I think it'll make a nice little addition to my to what I have here. And you really don't need an expensive solar uh, controller because since you're putting power from a battery directly through it into another battery, unlike solar that will vary on the voltage as it goes through that, a PWM type uh, solar controller will work just fine because you're going to have a steady voltage. It's not going to vary as you're pushing it from here into your battery. So you want to get an MPPT type of solar controller? Go ahead. They cost more money. I don't think you really would benefit from if you're only using it to charge from one battery to another. So now don't get me wrong. This is not efficient. If you were off grid and you had to move power around though, from one place to another, like from one battery to another, this would be a good way to rejuvenate some of your batteries. If they're in a place where you can't take them and charge them up where they're at, you have to take them out and take them back to like say your shop and then charge it up. That would be a pain. Well, with something like this, a solar generator and just your battery pack, I could probably take this and hook it up to here, to this 100 amp hour battery pack and use this as a charger to charge up another uh, battery of some kind. I could roll this out there and, and hook it up and do the same thing. So you can basically use a charge controller, a solar charge controller it looks like, to charge from one battery to another battery if you want. Depending on what the charge controller and the capabilities has as to what you can charge on the other end of it. So very versatile, but this is just a little LTB thinking. I kind of like the idea. I, I now know for sure it works. And I'm going to probably put a charge controller on some of my battery packs so that I can take and quickly hook up a, another battery and charge this battery charge battery up or I can take it and hook it up in such a way that I can take the power from here and charge up another type of battery so keep in mind it's a quick easy way to move volts around move amperage around from one battery source to another uh, it, these things aren't just for solar you can actually use them for battery to battery transfer too so anyway I hope this kind of helps you and get you to thinking because I think there's a lot of potential of things that you can do around the electronic shop with something like this if you add it to your arsenal of different types of uh, electronic equipment that you carry in your shop I think this would be a great addition it is for me and you can do it with almost any kind of battery tool tool battery that's in the 1824 volt 1820 volt batteries you can use them all the same way 
by using the different adapters. So um, anyway, I don't know what batteries you use. I do use Ryobi. So anyway, I think that's about it. If you have any thoughts or comments about this or how to make it better, I would love to hear it. Uh, but I think there's a lot of things I can do with this. Now that I've made one, I'm going to probably set it aside. And then as I use it and figure out what to do, or if I make another battery pack or improve a battery pack that I already have made, adding a feature like this to it just makes my battery packs that much more versatile. So uh, I hope you like it. Leave your comments. If you learned something here, you like this video, hit that like button. Let's me know I'm doing something right. Mm. Uh, most importantly, though, please come back again because I'm nowhere near done. Thanks, and we'll see you guys again very soon.